Hi, this is Tony Ruggiero, and you're listening to the Tour Coach Podcast. These are a collection of conversations, roundtable discussions, interviews with friends, people I meet, people I teach, folks that come to see us, people that I teach with, respect and admire all from around the world of golf. If you're a golf nut, a golf junkie, you love golf instruction, or maybe you just want a little entertainment, you're in the right place. We've got over 200 conversations out there available for you now on the Tour Coach, and I'm excited as we head into 2024. Our goal is to bring you more content each and every week and help all of you enjoy and play the game of golf better. Special thanks to my sponsors that have all been with me for such a long time. Thanks to McConnell Automotive, Mitch McConnell and the folks at McConnell Automotive and the folks at Bushnell Golf. Couldn't do any of it, especially pro work without them. Vineyard Vines, keeping us looking good and always taking care of us at all the retreats. And, of course, Shrikshan and Cleveland Golf and the folks there, whether it's Chip Holcomb, Eddie Dry, Mason Prang, Noel Zavada, Roddy McDonald, all of them, everybody that has been part of our journey with Shrikshan Cleveland Golf for over 23 years, I believe it is now. So, And also want to welcome one of the new sponsors to the Dew Sweepers and the Tour Coach Podcast, and that would be Visor Skin Care and our folks, the Franklins, who are been Dew Sweepers and fans of us for a long time. And it is by far the best skin care and sunscreen out there, so make sure you check them out as well. And hope you enjoy this season of the Tour Coach and what we've got going on. We're looking forward to bringing you some great stuff. And enjoy this conversation here on the Tour Coach. All right. You're listening to episode two of from our from our February retreat, which is one of the best we've had. Nine great juniors. The retreats are an all star cast, and we're from the from the Airbnb house with the hot tub. I can smell the salt. <laughs> Let me introduce this cast: <laughs> Jackson Court, uh, who's and Morgan Hale, who today young junior said. When she introduced it, you're often sitting on those round tables, in the round tables. <laughs> and so we shout brought... Often is a strong word. Shout out to Gregory Saki, yes. Took more notes than I did in 12 years hey, of school. Shout out to all the guys. Shout out to all of them. I mean, great. Man, we had great students after as well. So Morgan Hale, Coop, my boy Coop, Donald Coop Cooper in with us, Caddy, and Luke Guthrie making another appearance here. I mean, we've you even brought up firing me and all kinds of like how now we've reappeared on a podcast. So this is uh, so anyways, in the episode two, we had a topic going into episode one, believe it or not, because I don't think we stayed on it. But we 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 decided to wing this episode. Um, We're doing what he teaches players not to ever do. (laughs) (laughs) But. So, but we're going to start this off winging it with Jackson. Jackson had something he wanted to ask Coop. I got a hundred questions for Coop. I feel like. Oh, give Coop. Give me your. Give me your favorite dew sweeper moment on the range. Oh. I mean, the best thing I've ever seen Tony do on the range was at Pebble Beach. A student of his was a little lost. Did not trust anything, not, he didn't trust what was happening. And it was one thing going on with one club. And after, I mean, and it's blowing hard, it's a difficult rain session, really. It was hard to keep your balance. And uh, long story short, we found out that it was the club and not anything that he was doing. And I thought, I just thought to myself that day, how many other guys would have the balls to tell the guy, you know, that he's teaching that, you know, it's something different than what you think. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was, that was probably the most eye-opening moment to where I knew. It is three wounds. Yeah. And it was just. Yeah, and a thing that, that, a, a thing that I see is you look at a face of a driver that's made now. There's no grooves. So how are you going to draw it? Because we've got to create spin to draw it, right? Well, I think the other thing, too, that's a good point. That's a good point, too. Is I think players today, and this goes for all levels, these kids in particular, like, want to do stuff that sometimes, like, the ball's not built to curve much sure anymore. Isn't. Yeah. And if, it's, if anything, it's built to fall to the right. 
Mm-hmm. So, like, especially when we get, you know, we'll get members at the club. They put get, mud on the left side of the ball when they make them, so they go right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the situation today that got me is a, a student who's talented and I think can be a super good player. You know, they played some holes competitively after we worked all day. And the very first hole did not do what he should have done. And the difference was him losing confidence for just a little bit. He gained it back through Tony's teachings. But, you know, it's frustrating. And it frustrated me a little bit. But to the player, how much does it frustrate them? Especially being young and not really understanding. And wanting it, yeah. And wanting it, yeah. So I, I don't know why I've just got this visual. Like, you were talking earlier about how many miles you have on Delta and right. how many courses you've walked, right? right? Like, over like I past... wonder how far I've walked in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's At... like <laughs> to the moon and back. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. to the moon and back, like we did not do before. But anyway. Uh, so, like, you talk about all these courses that Luke and you have been talking about the last couple of days. Give me a couple of your favorite moments you've had out there. It doesn't have to be a shot, just like you. You know, I cannot get out of my mind. We played on Sunday with Tiger in Flint, Michigan, for his 50th win. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, 50's a lot. (laughs) That's a lot. (laughs) And he's still playing. You know, it's like he could probably get 100. You know, but then, you know, the body – Gets broken down a little bit, but it was just impressive watching how that man handled that situation with a smile on his face all day long, cutting jokes. He loosened up the situation for himself is the way I took it. You know, he was never, you never saw any tense moments or anything. It was like he's in control. And I felt that we couldn't beat him. And I don't like that feeling. It's uncomfortable when you know you're trying to win, and there's somebody you think you can't beat. I was hoping and knew Lucas wasn't thinking that. But it was like, this guy's going to be hard to beat. It was impressive. And I caught the apple on 17. No, no, no. No, no, no. Top 10. <laughs> Got through an apple. It threw a bounce right in my hand. I feel like I was going to throw it back at me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> But, I mean, go to Morgan. Get away from me. (laughs) All right, Luke, I have a question for you. So how would, like, today's experience with the juniors, what they're exposed to and how they're being brought up be different from your junior golf days? Oh, man, I would have killed for today's experience as a junior. I, I can't think. I didn't learn the things that were talked about today until my college experience. I didn't learn how to play the game. Until then, I was really good. I could shoot a lot of good scores. But if you put me on a hard course, I would get beat up very quickly. I didn't know how to shoot a good score when I was playing okay. And it's just, like, so cool to get such a comprehensive teaching and exposure in so many ways. And Being exposed to good players. Good teaching, good, good teaching. players. Right. And just getting to play with a pro, too. Yeah. Is right. Like, that's something that would not happen. I remember my parents got DA points to call me on my birthday once when I was like 13. I mean, it's like a huge impact. I gave Thomas LaVey a fist bump at the 2003 Masters. And you remember that. I remember that. He gave me a golf ball. Like, these are like huge moments for kids. And those are my small moments that like really spurred me on. And to have an experience like that, I... First of all, I wouldn't have been taking notes. I would have just sat there and wouldn't have been able to talk. I would have been so nervous and stuff. So good on the kids that are asking questions because I wouldn't have been brave enough back then. Right. But right. it's it, that's why they're ready to win earlier and earlier mm-hmm. in this game. 100%. Mm-hmm. So what moments now spur you on? Honestly, today. Well, it's inspiring you. today to somewhat help kids – like. I'm not a teacher. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's inspiring. And like, you realize you talk about what your how easy the game can be. It's like the classic Arnold Palmer, you know, quote of 
it's endlessly simple and complex game. And it really is. It comes down to just returning the dang club to the ball with a just square face. On the big shots and keep connected on the putt. Yeah, and it's that just confuses me. Yeah. It's, what? It's this <laughs> nice reminder of how to play the game and go through your process and how to practice. You know, you get lost, you get in the woods in, in this game. It's a marathon, a golf career. It's not a sprint. And you get off the wrong paths once in a while. And today was a great way to kind of get a little kick in the pants of no this is how you do things this is how you build confidence true confidence and true ownership in what you're doing how would you handle the situation if you were doing what you did today and it was god awful i mean you played good today you're driving with a golf ball was in my opinion second to none it was pure how would you handle the situation if you were hitting it poorly i I, if i was like 10 years ago, I would have been embarrassed and not right. say much, right. but now I would be able to talk about it and yes. and be able to be like, acknowledge, like, hey, I kind of like stink to today. That- this is what I'm doing right. to avoid the situation. Am I teeing the ball up lower and just advancing it? Am I slicing the crap out of it just so I know it's going a direction? You're either able to communicate, and that would also be like such a powerful moment of just being yeah. like, hey, man, chill out if things aren't going well. You have options. All juniors tee the ball too low. <laughs> Another <Yeah>. mic drop. <laughs> they, did. they do. Go ahead, Morgan. <laughs> Choke up on fairway bunkers. <laughs> tee <laughs> the ball up, uh, guys. It's called launch now. <laughs> I guarantee you. Take Luke advantage of it. Luke is never going to get a fairway bunker <laughs> and not choke up on it. <laughs> he will, well, he, if you do, and it's on national TV. <laughs> Take what, his feet he, in. He hit it correctly today on the worst case scenario I could come up with. I did it hit was, it correctly? It was, yeah, I think you hit a good shot. It, the yeah. dirt was more firm than you thought. Oh, yeah. But I thought it was a good shot. Oh, the 50 yard, the yarder? Yeah, that was a good shot. The awesome. next one was good. <laughs> right. I, I, I see mean, that's a I just, shot that people can't hit. Yeah. And the amateurs handled it. These kids handled that shot Very absolutely, well. incredibly well. It was a oh, amazing. Was it Leo, our yeah, 11 year old? Just, just nip two from 50 yards to like 20 feet right underneath the pin, just little slice spinners. Smart like, enough to play outside the box. He yeah. didn't even go for the green. That's perfect. And it left, and that was impressive. And it has to be from what these guys, you guys, have taught me. <clears throat> I mean, you can't, as a kid, come up with that. You're going at the flag no matter what. It was impressive. I think that watching these kids helps me tremendously. Just knowing the athleticism that it does take to play this game, because they have it, the flexibility. And it's not good to think about because I can no longer turn. Tony had me during COVID. (laughs) I went from like a 16 handicap down to a single digit. And, I mean, it was every day, and it was stupid at first. I got to tell him about it. First video I get from Coop during COVID, I check in on him, and he sends me this video. 110 at home. But it's, it looked like a scene from the movie in The Deer Hunter. I mean, like. In a cow pasture. <laughs> and there's. I, a net. All I see is a net. And I see, like, foliage everywhere. And I don't even know where he is. Like, he looked like he's in the Congo. <laughs> and he had, like, I swear to God, you looked like that thing on Deer Hunter. You, I swear to God, you had, like, a tank top on. You hadn't shaved. Hadn't shaved, and you had a hat on. Something uh, smoke, something smoking sticking out of your mouth. <laughs> and, he's on fire. <laughs> and, and you're taking, like, this video has you, the smoke's in the air, everything, and there's four swings, and then I see you walk towards the phone, and then you hit send, <laughs> and you're like, and you said, "I'm striping it, working on what we did last time at Sea Island." And I'm, oh my it was, god, it was bad. It was bad. But I mean, I stuck with his plan. I kept my hip where it should have been, and before long, I was hitting shots, and it was not good. But I mean. It was a big difference. And that's really the first time that I think I've listened to anybody. (laughs) About about anything. Anything. I just don't trust you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm serious. It's hard for me to trust you. 
What's been one of your favorite moments on your walk? I mean, you've had a bunch of them, right? You've played some great golf courses, had some great tournaments. What's been one of your favorite moments out there? Just playing golf, favorite moment, playing with Tiger. I mean, it's the cliche, but playing with Tiger in the Saturday and Sunday round in Honda because that's that's my idol growing up. He's the standard, and this was back in 14, so I forget what year. He was he was balling one of those years. Like He was kind of at it again. I was 24. And we shot humble brag. Shot matching 65s on Saturday. I got up and down from like 50 yard bunker shot on 18 back pin. Hit it to like a foot at the time. I wanted that so bad to play with him on Sunday, and I did it. But just being up close and personal, seeing what great golf looks like, and I tell people all the time, it's like the most boring. He's played so proper golf, like his iron play. About you though, to want to make that to play with him Mm -hmm. again, you know. He was so nice, by the way. Like, he was so, like, respectful of, of me. Like, he marked every, like, foot and a half putt all day long because every, nobody cares about me. Everybody would run yeah. off. But he would mark, especially if they were on my through line, and let me finish a five-footer. Wow. And then tap in, and everybody would stay there. That's a, that's How a cool big is that? deal. It's that's a big deal. Talk. I had a five-footer on the first hole. I'm playing with Tiger. Like, I'm puckered up, you know. I have five feet for par, and he has, like, a little foot and a half tap in. I'm staring right at the whole gallery. And I'm, like, already head down, ready for this, you know. Everybody's going to scatter. I'm going to be staring at thousands of people just running around, shouting. And he marks it. I was like, thanks, man. That was pretty cool. And did it all day. I just remember my favorite moment on the golf course. Sorry, but this is my last little No, it's not. (laughs) We're on a hole number one at a course. In Ohio, with thick rough, you could call it the bear, whatever. But it's a difficult golf course. And we get paired with someone, and we're on the first hole, and we're on the green. And this player we were playing with was not putting his best at the time and was known to be a little bit slow. And we had this caddy in our group that's working for Jeff Ogilvy, just a dear friend of mine, Alistair. It took quite a while on this third putt, and it was inside three feet. And the guy missed it, and we all felt bad. And exiting the green, Alistair says, he rushed it. He rushed it. He rushed it. All right. <laughs> For 2.0 again, what was one of your favorite moments as a junior playing? Or maybe one of those moments where you're like, I can do this. I'm going to do it. Junior, I kind of remember my college experience more, but junior, I remember finally playing. I was, I'm just a kid from corn cornfields and Illinois. I played a bunch of regional tournaments and did well. And I finally got in the AJGA. I went to, I played one. I won it out in Wichita, so then I got in the major later that year out at Scarlet. And, like, I remember shooting, like, I don't know, 70 in the first round, didn't think much of it, and was, like, in third and finished a, kind of a ho-hum third. And I was like, oh, kind of a moment where, like, oh, I, th- I might be kind of good at this golf thing. Like, that was pretty that easy. Like, I had a bunch of coaches watching me, national coaches, and, like, it didn't really scare me. So I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I learned something about myself. 70 on that course yeah, it was a good round, and I was probably 17 or something at that time. Col- I loved college. I, pl- I loved playing college golf, playing for other people, grinding, and just, like, trying to make putts not just for you but for your team. It's just, like, super cool. I went in the Big Tens every year, and, like, especially my senior year because, like, I was the leader, and, like, it was tight, and, like, we kind of run away the last three years, so, like, Kind of balling out the end and winning that for the, like. Yeah, coach, in my opinion, second. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's like, he just like, he's tough. Like, oh, sure. he gets in your face and stuff. He's a player. He gets maybe more mad when you play bad. And right. we had plenty of like face to face altercations, borderline. But like, it was always in a good way and like trying, trying to get the best out of you, kind of thing. And he appreciated like the fire back. But uh, yeah, just like the Big Ten. That, that win, and then let's see here. 
was there a level of like a, a <clears throat> level of like not respect but talent level on your team through the years? Like you were good. You said you became the top player towards the end of your yeah. Life. So Scott Langley was. On, I had a lot of good players on the team. Like we were, all, we were awesome. Some guys that didn't like make it as much, but like they were, could have made. It, but you still had be teammates that inspired. Sure. Yeah, I was chasing Scott Langley my whole time there. He was one year older than me, and like when I finally kind of got him a couple times, that was a big deal. And like he would get pissed when I beat him. It was like, right. but then we're once we got the tournaments, we're kind of brothers going out there kind of thing so it was such a good environment like if he beat me or he i beat him we borderline wouldn't talk for a day or right. something like that but then it made us like that pretty team. tough team probably built your competitive yeah that environment did do sweeper <laughs> <laughs> passing the mic what i'm gonna do tomorrow is step on those blue balls the balance balls <laughs> Your actually, blue pads? Actually, I, Tony had me doing those today. And I, <laughs> I mean, I want to step up on the pads. Can I get in trouble if I do that? Like, and fall? <laughs> because I used to look at... I got my favorite dew sweeper. I used to look at... I want to hear yeah, your favorite dew sweeper. I used to watch you guys get on that thing, and I'd go, what? I mean, what's the big deal until I tried it? Yeah. It's tough to get your balance in. A little balance blue balls. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Not Disc. Disc is like. We don't mean like. Disc. It's almost a verb and a magic. <laughs> yeah. Blue balls, we don't want to talk about um, That's the name <laughs> of this episode. Every player could stand for a. <laughs> a double P, your package. Oh, a pivot, a pivot, a pivot, a pivot pack. pack. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it, it's the stuff. Well, I mean, I was going to say, like, fitness or the component, like, is certainly changed over my course of teaching. And even on the tour stuff, like, obviously, you were working with Colby Touye and that stuff. And I've involved him around, like, you, Luke. You've been in the, that, the gym and then... That's become such a huge like, part of just our teaching. Can you imagine being 12 and somebody bringing two blue balls and going, stand on these, it'll make you better? <laughs> You'd probably say, is no. it going to hurt? <laughs> Me standing on these blue balls? Just doubling down on this. But, I mean, crazy. seriously, it's like, I, was, I never would have thought about balance at all. Not really? 20 years ago, absolutely not. No one ever talked oh, about yeah. balance. I mean, yeah, like, you went to all the way back to blue balls. <laughs> Talk about balance. <laughs> That's the method I saw today <laughs> to teach balance. Was two blue balls. Twelve-year-olds into it. Right there. I mean, and Luke got up on them. And but what I, I was just saying <laughs> is that, like, fitness has become so intermingled in what we do as it's changed. That's why Morgan has been so important. I mean, not just building as a teacher in Mobile and now nationally, but like the fitness component. And I think it's different. You saw it a bunch of times with LG, with me and Colby working together. And really saying you, you, to You've done so much work with me and Jackson and like today, Morgan hanging out. Like Mo, like the, the whole teaching component, I mean, the whole fitness component with teaching is different. But I think it's a big deal. We're down at Hilton. And I do agree everybody needs a pivot pack. We're down at <laughs> one year and Colby's staying with us. And it looks like <laughs> Barnum and Bailey's coming into town. There's strings and ropes and bungee cords all at every doorway. And I'm like, wow, are they going to have a haunted house? Or what's going on here? And, you know, they start doing their little ritual and, you know, pulling the bands. And I'm like, can you guys get this done? I'm watching forensic files in here. <laughs> and Lucas is like, well, why don't you come up here and do it? And I'm like, okay. Dude, so hard, the things that he was doing. It's like, holy crap. This is hard. Even standing on the blue ball. Is hard. I just, one of my favorite stories <laughs> of, of group of all time was PGA at Harding Park during uh, COVID. And we all had the house rented together. San Francisco. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
That was a doozy. That was a good week. We had Colby with us that yeah, week. Yeah, that was fun. And what about the house me, you, and Greg shared up at uh, uh, Wingfoot? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and, and we, in Rye, New York. And hold on. They're, they're, I know. The, the owner of that Airbnb, their husband was a famous ABC broadcaster. Well, how about the time y'all left me in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Where was that at? At a PGA. Worst course ever. Aaron Hills? Aaron Hills. <laughs> We, you know, missed the cut. He wasn't missing many cuts back then. Lucas wasn't. And I find myself alone with no vehicle, no. hungover. No. That... Y'all jetted on me and left me like in a cabin. Still mad. <laughs> oh, that was. <laughs> that that up. was a big yeah, What an odd place. <laughs> anyway. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> to bring it back to the the blue discs. But you you had me on that today, trying to get my posture better and like what like fitness can do. It can give you such a good feel too. Like immediately, like oh, that's where it has to happen because you stand on something like that and it's like it doesn't really work if you're not in the right position or if there's a band or Colby or Morgan. Like if there's something that kind of puts you in a spot, it can. I feel like what might take a week before to kind of communicate and stuff like fitness can kind of help you feel as a player yeah, like where it gets <clears throat> more. golf agent, Thomas Parker, daughter, Lily, we work with came out today and he took a lesson and we were, you know, it was kind of interesting to me. Like I was sitting there, you know, he, you know physical issues, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to find a way around it. And it was like, I, anyways, when we started talking about turning his hip back and the, I pulled his hip back once while I swang it. Swang, swung. Is it swing? <laughs> swing. Swing, swing, swung. That's right. <laughs> a good Japanese player. He's going to do some things, man. <laughs> Watch the ball he plays, though. Swing, swing, swung. <laughs> now on the tee. Swing, swing, swung. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I keep hearing you guys go back to posture. Every time you're teaching somebody, you guys go back to posture. It's like you fix the guy with posture. Is it, Jackson, is it, am I thinking right that posture is really it's massive. important? Yeah, it's the precursor to your movement. Like you did a thing to him, to, to Luke today, and I'm like, well, this is going to get him shorter. It made his posture taller. And it was bending, like bending the knees, but straightening up, you know, from the waist up. It, that was, it was just, it, it was fascinating how taller he got doing something. I thought he was going to get lower. <laughs> but posture seems to always come up. Yeah. It's the precursor to your movement. So, yes, posture on the balance desk. Like getting in a good car to go fast, you know. you got to build your posture. <laughs> You know, you got to start with something good <laughs> in right. order for something good to happen. That's but right. I just noticed that, like, when there's difficulties with swings that are perfect, in my opinion, you guys fix them with, like, a posture, something mm-hmm. simple, maybe pressure on this hip, whatever it be. But I think that's dialing in. You guys know what you're doing. And well, it's, one, it's last, one last question of Coop, and then uh, we'll ask Luke the same question but phrase different. Most impressive player you've been in the same group with, not saying caddy for like Corey be- Payton. <laughs> Corey Payton. Could not in my opinion, Corey today, as good as he was, would struggle with how the game's played now. He depended on his <laughs> I was gonna he, ask. Oh, I jumped into Dad I mean, I've done this my whole life. I'll shut up. I'm sorry, Tony. I was gonna <laughs> Corey Pavin impressed me day in and day out. I mean, hands down to him, man. That dude was good. And I don't think he could play golf today with the launch thing. You know? <laughs> There's no groups. No, I just, I, I don't know what, where I'm trying. I just, I think it's sad that if a player as talented as Corey today would not make it on the PGA Tour because he don't hit it 320 in the air. We talked about that a little bit today. I mean, like, I don't hit it that far. I'm an average hitter, but, like, I, it is. I, I think it's fun to watch the game and watch players who can move and control that golf ball really good. And, like, I didn't get to watch Corey Pavin play. But, I, obviously, he moved. Cleats to four feet. Hybrids to a foot and a half. Just impressive. <laughs> 
in Brussels. And then the year at the Masters when you had those clubs. The vast, right. the VAS, and I'm a tricks on Cleveland guy, but those are horrible. The worst. Who was the original question? Gosh, he was, he was Cleveland. Who made you cry? Cleveland, wasn't he? No, I was going to say, of all golfers. What he was actually going to ask. I was going to, I like, of all the golfers, what, like, who, as a ball striker and player, who most impressed you? Not Corey. <laughs> I'm sorry for jumping in there and getting so quick on that answer. Well, this is, I mean, Lucas, as far as ball striking, day in and day out, he's the be- he was the best, and guys knew it. I mean, it was a different sound. All, I'm a big audio guy. I think I've expressed that before, but Angel Cabrera, just the sound was different. I was telling the story, I think, to you today when I looked behind me one time and Munoz was hitting, and I'm like, Sounded so much like Angel in a well, in a corn fairy tour event, and sure enough, he's playing pretty well now. So it wasn't just you know I think sound is important. It, it reverberates solidity. You know you hit it solid if it sounds good. Did it feel good? Well, just do that. Trust <laughs> it. You know, just Trust do that. that. Luke, last question: Like all the players you've played with, you know, tour. Like, who's, like, where you walked off and you're either like, ah, man, I can't hit, the, you know, or I can't do that or I, whatever. Yeah. I mean, shoot, as far as I can't do that, I got to play with Rory at Memorial. I got my driver past his three wood once all day, and it's because he hit in the rough and I hit the fairway and I ran out. I was on 18. I mean, it just, like, launched and it was just out of here. Every time, same, just optimized. So it was just kind of, yeah, no chance I'm ever doing that in my life coolest guy the tiger thing it just he had such control over his ball flight and like he always could just place the ball like it's control you shake your hand super nice like everybody yeah all those guys are really cool and just normal That's dudes and stuff really like mm-hmm. what about yeah. so you have a phenomenal short game world thank now. you who's somebody short game wise where you're like okay that's that's pretty sick pretty good <sighs> Just like basic and just chips everything. Actually, Tim Wilkinson. Tim Wilkinson has really? such a sick golf or short game. Really? Like he lives in Jack, so buddy, get the practice with him. It's infuriating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I don't even know quite the form because so, keeps his weight on his left side, but kind of has a lot of like side bend through the shot. It's just the most shallow, beautiful thing. Like pitching, it is foot every time. It's Pitcher perfect. He can hit flop shots with nine irons and just hit them to a foot all day long. It has such control over it. It's silly. Like that's probably honestly the best short game I know of. Really, I might be able to beat him on a flop shot, but that's about it. Well, <laughs> and then you got to hit your middle shot. Yeah, I got to hit. I got to get him in my shot. What about <laughs> be, flat stick. Flat stick. The correct answer is me, just to be confident. You are but. Great. That's yeah, right. That's always – no. When I when I really was putting well early in my career, like, I I was a great putter. I think I was one of the best in the world, for sure. Strix always – I've been an Illinois guy. I've got to be around Strick a lot. And it's just – even when he's, like, complaining about his putting, he's still hooping so many putts. And you're like – Because it didn't go in where he Yeah, just, he's just not completely confident in what he's doing. But it's just hugging the ground and just perfect pace and just pouring in. And you're like – there's a different way to make putts. Some guys make putts, and it's like the ball dives into the hole. Like, and he's one of those guys that's like it's a heat-seeking kind of right. boom. It just goes in, and Did sometimes notice, the hole gets in the way. You ever notice putters that put it? I've noticed it. It looks like the ball is grabbing the ground. It leaves a mark so weird. for a second. You can almost see a path on the ground on great putters for a split second, even when there's no do. I've noticed that. It's like that ball cannot get in the air. Yeah. It is sucking to the ground. But those guys that do that, I don't know how you do it, but your ball does that when you put it. When I'm putting it, it never comes ball. off the ground. Yeah. It's <laughs> impressive to watch. Yeah. Um, guys, this has been awesome. Girls, guys and girls. Yeah. Fun. Hey. Coop, thanks so much for Thank being such guys. a special yeah. part of the weekend and these and uh, Jackson, if you will, tomorrow, if you'll grab Coop and do a little 10 minute potter, we got to have Coop do it. Maybe for haircut, and I'm afraid for haircut. 
Might as well trade it for a haircut. Luke, thanks so much for Luke's. Thanks for so much for coming down to sneak in a little work and help out the kids. It's been awesome. For man. sure, I love being here. Mo, we can't do these. Mo, Mo's crushing it. Good questions tonight, and but thanks also for all you do, man. Can't think of anybody I'd rather travel with. <laughs> thanks to you, T. All right, Jackson, good work. We'll catch you next week. Plus, catch. make sure you catch Jackson K with some of the potters, the little 10 minuters. Listen up tomorrow. We'll come up with a good one tomorrow, a little 10 minute. All right, sounds good. Hi, this is Tony Ruggiero. And look, recently, several teachers I know and several players have had some scares with skin cancer. In fact, I recently went and saw a dermatologist here in town, and I had a couple things frozen off, eyelid, my face, my earlobe, and not getting any younger. And I know I know it's getting to that time of the season where it's cooler, but look, being in the sun is a real deal, and I've not been very good, to be totally honest, my whole career at using it at all because I didn't like how greasy it was, how hard it was to get off your hands, how it clogged up my pores. And then I found this sunscreen, Visor Skin Care. It's clear. It goes on. It doesn't dry you out. It isn't greasy. It's like you didn't put anything on. By far, it's the best sunscreen I've ever used. Without a doubt, is the easiest to use. And we've got a discount code for all of you. All you have to do is go to visorskincare.com. Is use our code word, DoSweeper. Visorskincare.com, code word, DoSweeper. I just want to remind everybody something that I forgot. Recently, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I went out. We went to a wedding, and afterwards, with some friends, we were like, hey, where's a great place to go? I'll be honest. Like, in my travels and day-to-day, sometimes I get caught up, and I forget some of the great places right around the corner. But I got to remind you about the Ice Box Bar on 755 Monroe Street. I was blown away by just the whole vibe, the atmosphere, and with the Velvet Pig, the food in the back room, and the big screen TVs up front. We sat there and watched some playoff games. I was blown away by the atmosphere, the vibe, and just how cool it was to have the Icebox Bar right here near the Dew Sweepers downtown, near where I live. If you're looking for a great place to go sit, watch some games, hang out, play some pool, you got to go to the Icebox Bar right there on Monroe Street. There's a good chance you'll see all of us hanging out. Do yourself a favor. Go visit the Icebox. It's one of the best places out there.